So welcome to worship this morning, a special welcome if you are visiting and joining us for the first time, um, be it here in person or online or joining us maybe later on YouTube. Um, all are welcome in this place. And uh, we do acknowledge that we are on some traditional lands, traditional lands of the Chippewas and the Mississaugas under the Williams Treaty. We join together as all of us. So let us enter more deeply into worship as we hear our faith. Don't forget, everything uh, is still being 
posted to YouTube. Worship and uh, other things are there, so take that opportunity if you miss a Sunday. Heather Griffin is doing her outdoor Christmas planters again, and I'm not sure that online you can see it properly, but there are a couple examples here at the front um, if you're wondering what they look like. And uh, she needs to have your order by the 28th of November. She's going away after that, so you need to get the note. Cheese campaign. Forms are due by next Sunday, the 21st, and delivery will be the 1st of December. And uh, information again in the bulletin. You can speak to Janet O'Neill about that. Fun script order. Needs to be in by the 28th of November. Have I got that right, Julie? Need to be in by the 28th, and uh, then pickup will be on December the 5th. We do need a minimum order, so if you're thinking about doing any gift cards for Christmas, sit down and think ahead a little bit and get them ordered so that um, we can do that through the church. And if you need an order form, there are some out at the Emily Street door. You can talk to Julie, who's sitting at the very back, and uh, we'll make sure you have the right form. Just a note, the Christmas online auction that you may have seen in the bulletin the last couple of weeks has been um, shifted to February. Things are just a little bit too busy the next couple of months, and so the stewards who have been very busy as it is um, have decided to wait until February. And Heather Griffin was just letting me know this morning she is coordinating, yes, up here at the front, she is coordinating um, the Salvation Army Kettle Program, uh, and they will be set up at Foodland, and uh, she's just wondering if anyone might be interested in taking a shift, you can talk to Heather for more information. And as always, there are many ways that you can donate, and we thank you for continuing your donations as you are able to help this ministry continue during this strange and wonderful time. So thank you for being here, and thank you for supporting us. And now, as we light our Christ candle, may this light be a reminder. Reminder of the one who came preaching and teaching peace and love and light. But it shines for us.
It is uh, two verses only. We remain seated and we have to keep our masks on for now. And I did notice, and I didn't notice it until late last night, early this morning, uh, that on the first verse, the hallelujah, hallelujah is missing. So when Joanne keeps playing, just sing hallelujah. Wine. But 
Hannah answered, No, my lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, Let the, your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house in Mama. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. Our hymn before story time, Praise Our Maker. you all know how hard it is to have a conversation with somebody who never stops talking. You know, you know, you all have a friend who you can't get a word in edgewise with. Or if we stop talking, maybe we'll hear what we need to hear. Sometimes prayer is simply sitting quietly waiting to hear God's part of the conversation. We don't need to have the priest or the intermediary the way that they did in Hannah's day. We can talk directly to God, thanks 
to that connection that Jesus has created. But we still have to remember that it's a dialogue. We talk and God talks. So it's okay sometimes to sit quietly and if anybody says, what are you doing? To say, I'm praying. But that's God's chance to talk and our chance to listen. It's not always easy to hear, but it's part of prayer. And maybe like with Hannah, you'll ultimately hear the answer. So let's pray together words that we've been taught to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And this morning is not a responsive song. Oh, sorry, Jane, I'll give you a chance. We, we don't have any special music today, so I didn't pause in the same way.
the Mount of Olives opposite the temple. Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when this will be, and what will be the sign that these things are about to be accomplished. Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he. And they will lead many astray. Many will come in my name. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place. But the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pains. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our hymn, If You Will Trust in God to Guide You. If you will trust in God to guide you. First line of that hymn immediately came to mind as I was thinking about what do you do with today's scriptures. Hannah held fast in her faith that God would be with her. She was rewarded in the end. The disciples are warned to stay true to the teaching of Jesus and Jesus' ways. True to God. They'll come out the other end of whatever's going to happen. There are some who would probably say that the last, I think somebody told me, 20 months now, have been one of those birth pains. You know, wars, rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes, pandemics. But this isn't the first. And I don't want to jinx anything, but I'm not sure it'll be the last. If we look back in history, these kinds of things have happened over and over. Just last week, when we were doing Remembrance Sunday and talking about some of that, we realized that wars have never ceased. You could read through the holy book we open each week and find many wars continuing. There have always been famines and earthquakes and all of these other things. In fact, last night I happened to flip through because there was nothing on. 
but I wanted some background noise, and it was all about apocalypse and all the things that have happened over many years to different civilizations that have just appeared, and now the scientists are able to tell us what catastrophic event led to it. They just keep cycling through. Jesus said, each time it happens, don't panic, it's not the end. He didn't actually, in the passage you read, tell the disciples what the end would look like. He just said it's just the beginning. This is a kind of hard teaching from Jesus. Usually Jesus is, is a little bit more upbeat and positive in the end. This one doesn't sound particularly hopeful, does it? It's just the beginning. There will be more war, there'll be more famine, there'll be more natural disasters. It's just the beginning. If you keep reading, he actually tells the disciples all the horrible things that may happen to them because they follow him. It's all just the beginning. So where does that leave us? Right here, right now. There's been a lot of doom and gloom the last while. We're in the, mid, in the midst still of trying to figure out how we live in this new way of being. How we live with this new thing we've been combating. My sister, when we chatted last, she's a surgeon. Their, their philosophy is you can't cut it, you can't cure it. But she looked at me and she said, well, it's like the flu. We're going to have to learn to live with it. I said, well, how do we do that? She said, I don't know how to figure that out yet. Because you can't cut out a virus like this. But we have to learn to live with it. We have to figure out what it's telling us what it might be able to lead us to. Jesus is encouraging his disciples to move closer to God and to one another, in supporting one another as this happens. Part of the reason many of us have been so desperate to physically be back together. We know that when we are together, we're stronger. When we're together, it's easier to support one another. We've been trying to do it in various ways for the last 20 months. We've been on each other's screens. We've talked on the phone. We've waved from across the street. And we've learned how, ident how to identify all of our friends when you can only see a third of their face. But we've struggled. Jesus warned his disciples there would be struggles. Jesus warned them that part of those struggles would be people saying they were following him and he was back. Because when he left, there was this thought that he would be back very soon. The second coming would be while those first believers were still alive. We're still waiting. He warned the disciples it wasn't going to be easy. And over the years, people have come and said, I'm it. Follow me. And somehow, still we keep waiting. Still we keep hoping and trusting in the words. God is with us. It's just the beginning and God will go with you through it. Those first disciples, they ended up having to worry about many things because they were going through many trials. And yet, they stuck together and they stuck to their faith didn't always mean that they survived. 
but they stayed true to what Jesus had taught them. No matter what happens, we need to find that way through. We may need, like Hannah, to prostrate ourselves in prayer and ask God to be with us. Ask God to show us the way. Have you ever thought about what happened to Hannah in the end? She got an answer of yes to her prayer. But her prayer included giving that very yes up. She had to give her child back to God. Aren't you glad I didn't make that promise, Stephen? Yeah. Stephen's not going into the ministry, so he gets some of it. She made that promise on his behalf. Samuel didn't have a choice. Mom had promised that's what would happen. And in Mom's living out of the promise, Samuel's life and the life of the Israelite people was changed forever. Samuel is the one who anoints the first king of Israel. Changes the whole way of being for that people. The disciples, in holding fast to Jesus' teachings, changed the whole world. Helped others come closer to God. But it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for Hannah to wait. It wasn't easy for Hannah to go through all of the times when Penina would give her a hard time because she hadn't had a child wasn't easy for all of the trials that came for both Jesus and his disciples. But their faith in God and God's love and God's presence ultimately saw them through. Our faith in God, God's love and God's presence continues to see us through. We don't know where we're going yet. We don't know how long it will be to get there. But God will be there with us, just as God is with us now. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Amen. We do thank God each day for our blessings, for all that we have been given and all that we continue to be given. We have that opportunity to use our blessings to be a blessing for others as we celebrate what we have given in commitment and in thanks to God to help the church and God's ministry here and far away. We know there are many needs in our world, some near, some far, some we know and some we don't. 
We know that we don't always hear everything. And yet we know that our prayers are heard by God. And so we offer them up and ourselves that God might use us. Let us pray. We believe and trust that you, God, are the one in whom we are grounded and supported. We are committed to loving others through the power of your covenant love. We live in hope that encourages us to reach toward the light that does not come from human sources, but from your power. Despite our commitment and hope, your wisdom is immensely larger and your love infinitely deeper than ours. We bring to you, loving God, our prayers for our needier sisters and brothers the world over. We bring those maimed by landmines or terrorist bombs, injured in industrial accidents, and the many who, because of road trauma or sporting injury, must find a new and painstaking way of living each day. Bless each of these and those skilled people who nurse and encourage them. We bring to you family or colleagues, friends, neighbors, or strangers who are fighting a battle against diseases that are chronic, life-threatening, or life-altering. Bless every afflicted child, woman, or man, and those physicians and specialists, surgeons and therapists whom you use for healing. We bring to you the social outcasts in our society, the street kids and call girls, drug users and suppliers, the alcoholics and those in prison. Bless and help each of these children of yours and give wisdom and courage to social workers, police officers, chaplains, probation officers, and drug counselors. We bring to you the children of new immigrants who are starting school the children who are victims of schoolyard bullies, those who learn differently and are derided by other students, the child who is abused at home, and the many children in foster care. Bless and guide the teachers and carers, foster parents and student counselors. We bring to you employers and employees, the unemployed and the unemployable, staff of job centers, those administering social welfare benefits, and the host of people who must work at jobs they find distasteful or degrading. Bless each person who this week will make decisions that will affect the dignity and poverty of others. We bring to you the prayers that lie upon our hearts in celebration or in sorrow. Hear our prayer. Most holy God, you are physician, teacher, counselor, parent, judge, nurse, therapist, and mediator. Use us whenever you can for your work, whether it come easily to us or hard. And don't let us get our noses out of joint when you choose others to do the tasks we would prefer to do. Through Christ Jesus, our servant Lord, we pray. Our closing hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me?
before the commissioning, I don't know if any of you have realized that it's much brighter in here today. They have finished the lights. They all work. They're all much brighter. And the fans all work independently so we can get it where we need it as soon as John figures out how to use the remotes. <laughs> We know God's love holds us fast. We know we have been blessed. So let us go to be a blessing. May the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep each one of you, now and always. Amen. Have a great day, everyone, and a good week. You too. Have a good Thank one. You. Take care. Bye now. Bye now. Bye. Bye.